video is part six in our nerve entrapment series. I'm going to be specifically covering the accessory nerve, the function of the nerve, where it gets entrapped, why it gets entrapped, clinical signs of an entrapment, how to effectively palpate it, and lastly, how to effectively treat it. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Dr. Matt Maggio. I am a soft tissue injury treatment expert specifically for neck, shoulder, elbow, and wrist pain. My focus is on finding and fixing scar tissue and then reducing inflammation from chronic injuries without the use of drugs, injections, or surgeries, which does lead to a significant increase in overall functioning and long lasting pain relief. I am also the creator of the peak method and the founder of the soft tissue treatment revolution, where we teach overworked massage therapists, a better treatment system that will allow you to cut your treatment times by at least 50%. So you can stay healthy, avoid the dreaded burnout and help a hell of a lot more people get out of pain. All right. So nerve entrapments part six, if you haven't watched any of the other videos that we've covered in the series, I will link it up top here on YouTube. If you're consuming this in on LinkedIn, I'll put it down in the description box below, but it could be covering the accessory nerve. It is probably the most common nerve entrapment in the upper body. It is a very important one that a lot of providers miss. They don't know what's actually causing a lot of the problems in the upper traps in the neck as well. So the goal of this video is helping you be better equipped to identify when these problems are happening, the clinical signs, being able to get in there and effectively palpate it. And lastly, showing you how to get specific treatment to break down this nerve entrapment so your clients can get long lasting pain relief. So function of the accessory nerve, the accessory nerve is considered a cranial nerve. There's 12 of them that come out through the brain. There's only a couple that actually go out into the periphery of the body and, and make their way out where they leave the brainstem and go. One of them is the accessory nerve. It is strictly what is called a motor nerve and its motor action is really to move two muscles, two very important muscles in neck function stability and overall motion, the trap and the sternocleidomastoid. I never say that right. So we'll just call it the SEM. So this nerve is strictly a motor nerve, doesn't do any of the sensory functions as well, just moves these two very big, important muscles in the neck. So where does it get stuck? So the accessory nerve has a long way to go. And a lot of times it starts out behind the ear. That's where it comes out right around like C2 and then works its way down into the back, into the neck, and then around to the front of the SCM as well. The most common areas where I end up seeing a lot of entrapments of the accessory nerve is definitely going to be like right around that C7 out to the superior angle of the scapula. And there's a lot that lives there. You have the traps, you have the levator scap, you have the rhomboids, you have a lot of the cervical erectors as well. And what happens is that nerve sits right over top of that. And it has a long path to where it goes. And there's a lot of areas where it can get caught, but that tends to be the most common area where you're going to find that nerve entrapment kind of popping up and, and really sticking out to you as the provider. So why does the nerve get stuck? Same story every training so far in the nerve entrapment series, poor and sustained posture, people sit too long, they look down too much. And what happens is the muscles are constantly contracted. They do not get a blood, enough blood flow and enough oxygen sends a signal to the brain. Hey, something's going on here. Brain goes, okay, I'll help out. I'm going to send down some immature collagen fiber, really try to buffer that area over time that gets bigger and bigger. It's like glue inside there. Now the muscle becomes less flexible and weaker spreads out over time. Eventually the nerve gets caught in there as well. Nerves are built with 15% of extra slack to keep them healthy. Like a rubber band gets used up in there. That's where it gets caught. You know, modern society, you're going to find this entrapment on pretty much every single person out there because we spend our entire lives looking down at our phones, sitting on computers, not moving enough. It is very common and is vastly underdiagnosed. Also just an injury and trauma, like Say they got hit directly in that area, more scar tissue forms, nerve gets stuck. And then the other one is just issues from past surgeries. Maybe someone had some type of neck surgery or some type of, I don't know, lung surgery or something where they needed to go in and get there. A lot of times, sometimes they can nick that, that nerve, cause some issues in there as well. So it can get caught for several reasons, but pretty much the same that we've seen in every one of these trainings. Common injuries associated with an entrapment of the nerve. Number one is what I call tight or knots in the trap. You know, people come in all the time in my clinic and they go, oh man, my, my traps are so tight. There's just these big giant knots in there. The knot you are feeling is that scar tissue being stuck to the nerve. And that's why it feels tight. That's why it feels like a giant knot. Next thing is neck stiffness. So when nerves get entrapped or stuck, 
what happens is the muscles around there tighten up. I talked about this in the very first training. It creates something called protective tension. So what is protective tension? If the nerve is compromised, the body is going to tighten up all the muscles around there to take the pressure off of there. So when the nerve is exposed and getting entrapped, it's going to cause problems. It's going to tighten up. Next one is going to be numbness and tingling into the shoulder blade. Nerve entrapments have a very clear clinical sign. They present with numbness, aching, burning, and tension. And one of the first things to show that there is a nerve ent uh, entrapment going on in there is going to be a presentation of some tingling. They'll say a lot back there, like in that area I talked about, the C7 area where the rhomboid is, uh, where the trap is, the levator scap. They might say they have a lot of numbness and tingling in that area. And then lastly, just going to be tension, headaches, or migraines. When the nerve is compressed, it's getting caught. Everything else there tightens up. All the muscles tighten up. They don't get enough blood flow. They don't get enough oxygen. It triggers a headache. A lot of time that headache is the body's protective mechanism to say, hey, you're doing too much. I need you to take it easy. It gives you the headache so that you lay down and you don't ignore the symptoms. Most people pop an Advil or a Tylenol and go on with their day. Ignoring it, eventually they're going to have to deal with it down the road. So how to find it? how to find if that entrapment is happening. First is just into that history questions where I talk about like, where do you feel it? What does it feel like? Um, how intense is it? You know, a lot of times you're going to, they're going to have that symptom location where we talked about, but they're also going to say some numbness some tingling, some burning, all of those other clinical factors as well. Don't just simply like go in that spot and think it's there, like ask questions, slow down, take data. That's what we train in our more advanced courses, like critical thinking, taking a, a thorough history to figure out exactly what's going on, because if you can't find it, you can't fix it. So the way that I like to palpate this is um, I like to use landmarks. I talk about bony landmarks and having areas in the body where I can find things. And the best way to find where this entrapment is, you start at the C7 spinous, which really sticks out on people's neck there where the cervical spine becomes a thoracic spine. And then I go over to the superior angle of the shoulder. You can't miss it. Those are two very big bony landmarks. And then you kind of go across and you feel it. The way I like to palpate this is having the client uh, sitting. And when they're sitting, what we also do is we bring their arm across their body and that pulls that tension out of there and gets that out of the way. So you can really get in there and feel where that nerve entrapment is happening. What I want to include first in the training video is an advanced palpation from one of our advanced courses. So you can really see how I use the landmarks, how I go in and find it so that I can then get in there and effectively treat it. So I'm going to link that up right now. Third test we had talked about was that cervical thoracic spine area flexion test where they drop their head down through there. So there's a couple things that can really limit that. One that everyone completely forgets about is actually an accessory nerve entrapment. Usually it comes out, it can get caught in here through the levator. It can get caught through anywhere in the erector group, the rhomboid, everywhere like that. So I like to get in there and palpate that because if the nerve is getting stuck when patients go to move, everything tightens up and it protects. So if you can get the nerve right in fine where it's getting caught, you can make big changes in that overall range of motion. So what I do first is I have the patient hold their arms just like that. What that does is it allows that shoulder blade to get out of the way. Then we get in there and drop the head down. So I'm gonna have to come up a little bit more and really get in here. So essentially, we look for our landmarks here. So we find the superior angle of the shoulder and go through here. Where that nerve lives is in through here. So I get in here and I do compressive palpation, really trying to feel where that nerve is jammed up. And it's gonna kick right out when it is jammed up with that scar tissue. The patient would even jump just like she did. Now, the thing is it gets stuck right in through there. And that's where that scar tissue is. And the thing about the nerve is it, it's very superficial. It doesn't need a lot of compression and too many people are way too compressive with it and it causes problems. The next thing you have to account for is the curve in the thoracic spine. So if you just go straight in, you're gonna crush it. You almost wanna come in at a 45 degree angle as you get in there and palpate. And that'll really open that up. So as you can see in the video, palpation is so important. And everyone kind of just wants to breeze through it and get on it right away. But I like to cheat a little bit. When I cheat, I'm using bony landmarks. So I'm not having to guess like, eh, is it there or not? I find these big, easy things to palpate. And then I know that it has to live somewhere in there. And that's what I'm going in there and feeling that tension when that nerve is stuck. It doesn't have a good bow to it. It really just feels like it's jammed up right there. And it's very precise and very focused. Now the treatment part, everybody's favorite. How to effectively treat this area. 
I say this every week, and it's even more important as we're going in and training in what we do. It has to be slow, it has to be precise, and it has to be focused. You know, so many people go in there and just beat the living hell out of that area, and it causes a lot of issues. It has to be slow, precise, and focused. Because if you go in there and just jam your elbow in there, you beat it up too much, it's not going to be effective. You might think with the client, oh, it's it's doing something because it hurts like hell, but no, that's not the case. It's actually causing bigger issues down the road. What I wanna link up next is a treatment demonstration from one of our advanced CEU, CEU courses, uh, demonstrating exactly how we do my treatment called manual scar tissue treatment, getting proper depth, tension, then backing out and then having the client go through a full range of motion. So I'm gonna link that up right now. Kind of run my thumb over. And when it's caught, it'll feel like a piece of string that's caught and hers is caught right there. What do you feel in there, Joy, some tension? Yeah. So now I found it and I know where it is. And the key here, if the entrapment is occurring right here, what you wanna do is actually go just superior to it because what we're gonna be doing is called internal slide where we set it and then the client goes through a range of motion and it forces it to go there. So once I find it, I don't really leave my thumb off of it because then I know I'm there and I won't leave it off of there. Now the key is gonna be the setup. So you're gonna tell the client how you want them to move. She's gonna start back in some extension. And then I'm gonna have you drop your head down nice and slow, just like that. And they're gonna drop it towards their chest. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bring it back in extension. Now the setup here is really key. So I have my, my thumb here just like that. And what I do is I come in at a 90 degree angle. So I'm facing opposite to the wall. Some people go like this, that's not good, or they're here. And all you're gonna do is bleed out some force in there. So what I'm gonna do here is the scar tissue's here. I'm gonna be just above that. And the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come in at 90, and you see how my elbow gets nice and high. This is gonna allow me to accommodate for that 45 degree angle in there. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my other hand, and specifically like the pisiform and the web here, and that's gonna go in and basically cover up that thumb and protect that. So I'm here and I'm here and I'm in a really good position and see how everything's lined up and this kind of gets that line of drive as we go in there. In order first, we got to get depth on it. And my depth is going to be just a very slight lean with my hips in there. And if you're pushing too far, the client will move too much. You don't want that. It should just be enough where you're going in very gentle like that. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop my elbow just a little bit, just like that. And I'm gonna kind of pull it in towards my body a bit. And then I'm gonna drop a little bit more in a squat. And that's really loaded up. Now the client's ready for me to go through the motion. We can go ahead. And I'm just feeling it pull, 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 pull. And as I'm getting more tension, I'm kind of leaning away with my body and down and pulling with that elbow. All of my force is coming through my thumb, but I'm keeping my depth with this other hand. So what I'll do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove my um, palm so you can just see it with the thumb, so you can kind of see what it looks more like. So as I'm in there, I get my depth like that, and then my tension is like that. So the tension is a very short set. You wanna actually get some tension into the nerve itself, and then it's loaded up, and then the client goes through that motion. So I'll set it up one more time. So we took the time to palpate it. Always palpate it and find it. Never be directly on it. You want to be right up against it. So I'm here and I found it. I'm here. Come in at 90. This one comes in and backs it up. And I'm not in a hurry. I'm staying here and I'm very controlled. And the first step, get my depth with that slight body lean. Tuck my elbow in. And then I'm going to do a slight squat to start. And I'm going to wait a second, and that's loaded, and now I'm going to have the client go through the motion. And I'm just feeling that pull, and as it gets more, I can get more tension by dropping that elbow a little bit more. A big thing with treatment, and I talk about this a lot, is it's not about the quantity of the treatment, it's actually the quality and getting very focused. You know, so many people, like I said, just go in there and they do what's called a pin and stretch. They don't feel the tissue slide. It hurts like hell and they think they're doing something. All you're doing is jamming that nerve in there and making it a lot worse and irritating it. Another thing is just getting that dosage right. With a nerve entrapment, you want you never really want to do more than about three to five passes on that nerve entrapment from what you find. Anything more than that is going to be overly effective and actually can cause some problems down the road and make it more inflamed. 
And then lastly is going to be just the head movement based off where that location of the entrapment is. So if it's more like right toward the spine, like right around that C7, their head movement is just going to go straight down. If it's more out to the lateral side, what I like to do with the treatment is I have them go straight down and then tuck their ear to the side. But once they get to that full end range there, I keep it on their chest and have them move as well. That's just going to help you generate that end range tension and really break it down as we go. So that's all I got for you guys. Um, appreciate you watching the video. Uh, reach out if you've gone through our free training courses and learned some of that stuff to see if any of our in-depth training courses will be worth investing in. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.